But when we talk about camera obscuras, when we talk about old school cameras, okay, or pinhole cameras, what would happen is you would have this actual uh, film paper that would be on the back of this box. So back here, you'd have a, a, a piece of film paper, almost like a Polaroid. A Polaroid camera works the exact same sort of way that a camera obscura works, okay? In the sense that, in the sense that, as that flash would go off, as that big um, sulfurous <laughs> chunk would be lit and would go foof, and it would create a flash, the photographer would actually open up the pinhole for a fraction of a second. He would click it open and it would shut again. So all of the light, because remember, the flash is just like basically exploded more light into the area. That light would go from an area where there's a lot on the outside over here to an area where there's not a lot through the hole. So all of the objects that were in that, that hole's field of view, let's say, all of that light would actually make its way into the camera obscura. And what it would do, so if you had a bunch of people standing there and you were taking a group photo, okay, what would happen is light coming from the topmost part of these people would actually make its way through, okay, and it would start up at the top of these people and it would follow that same arc. It would follow the same angle through the camera obscura. And it would basically propagate itself onto this paper film in the back. Same goes with light leaving the bottom of the image, okay, or the bottom of the objects, and it would go through the camera obscura to make it so that the image actually gets inverted onto the actual screen, okay? So the image created... This, now, would this be a real image, or would it be a make-believe, like a virtual image? <laughs> it's a good question. You would end up making it a, a real image, I do believe. Right? Because the, the light rays are actually converging on their own. They're converging. And this, remember, this is not a reflection. Okay, this is not an actual reflection, therefore it is a real image. You can't confuse ray diagrams and the first and second and third principal axis with an actual camera obscura. Because in a camera obscura, there's no real reflection being created. Okay, this is just the propagation of light rays that's creating the image. And the image the size of the image is going to depend on a few things, okay? So the magnification of this image is going, and, and the size of it is going to depend on, first, okay, how far the object is from the camera obscura. So the distance, um, and actually I'll write that in small case, so the distance of the object. It's also going to depend on the distance from the actual pinhole to the actual back of the camera obscura. Okay, and that is going to be the distance at which, as soon as these actual light rays cross one another at the threshold of the camera obscura, then we start measuring distance to the actual, um, plat uh, the actual kind of, um, what word am I looking for? the actual flat surface that the image is going to be created on. Okay, so this, from the, the, the actual, the pinhole to the base of the camera, this is going to be the distance of your image. All right? In addition to this, we already know that when we're actually looking at, um, when we're actually looking at, magnification, we're dealing with the height of the object, so HI, and actually that's a terrible color, okay, we're dealing with HI, and we're also dealing with the height, or sorry, that's HO, we're also dealing with the height of the image created. Okay, so we've got these four variables. We've got height of the image, height of the object. We also, when we're starting to deal with um, 
camera obscura and we're starting to deal with images created, we've got the distance that the image is away from the, 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 where the actual lenses or light rays cross versus the distance that the object is away from the camera obscura. So a camera obscura will create a real image. Okay, because nothing is being reflected there, first of all. So there's no first principal ray, second principal ray, third principal ray. You're basically looking at whatever the object is, one ray is leaving the top and it's going towards the pinhole. So if I've got my pinhole, so if I've got my pinhole like this, okay, my pinhole has a set opening. If I've got my object here, Okay, I've got a tree over here, measly looking tree. Some rays are going to leave here and they're actually going to make their way to the pinhole. Now the reason I keep them going here is because there's nothing stopping them inside the actual camera obscura. It's a box. Okay, there's no screen here stopping the light ray from going. Okay, just like the light rays leaving here end up going here and that's why your image ends up being inverted because the light ray that left from the bottom of the object ends up being on top and the light ray that left from the top ends up being on the bottom. And the same goes, like I've got them crisscrossing here, the same can be said if your camera opening is here, you've got your object here, okay, even if they're not crisscrossing, they will crisscross at some point. Even if this one comes from the top and touches the top, right, and this one comes from the bottom and stays on the bottom, they're still going to be crisscrossing at some point. It's still going to create an inverted image. Usually the pinhole is so small that we just see the X. So if you look in your textbook, you'll see when we're actually looking at the geometry of the image formed from a camera obscura, they basically, there's no opening in the actual pinhole. Okay, so it's basically what they're doing is they're shrinking this guy in size and they're bringing him through the actual pinhole opening and that causes it to be inverted. Your eyes work the exact same way. Your eyes, actually the stimulation that, the, that your eyeballs, okay, that your rods and cones receive sends a message through your ocular nerve Okay, ocular nerves, and I should say that your left eye actually crosses and is processed on the right side of your brain at the back, and your right eye crosses and is processed on the opposite side. And that goes with, that, that's one of the reasons that your actual image gets flipped. Okay? So does it matter where the rays converge? No, because I won't necessarily ask you to draw this. This mathematically here, you're going to be given an actual, inf you're going to be given a problem with some of these variables. And based on those variables and which one's missing, it could ask you to find the height of the image or how tall the object was or how far away it was, okay, or what the depth of the actual camera obscura is or what the magnification is. We'll carry on next class.